At 2-2, two two, Kootenai's back to even at the Memorial Cup, but shorthanded did not bother Joe Antilla last night. His goal changed the momentum. Against the attack, Matt Frazier finished the job. St. Mike's skipped the tiebreaker, but are looking for more hop for their step. In the semifinal tonight, Sezikis, Flick, lead the way with two each. We've dressed it up. Only one option from here. Last night, the finality of the tournament hit its mark. Handshakes signified the end of a dream, drawing out the emotion of failure. With tears filled with confirmation, the season was over. Out of that comes renewed hope. Hope for a championship team on the rise. Improving every game, Kootenai performed to expectations and earned a shot at the Memorial Cup host. Both clubs required a second chance to get here. As last night proved, those days are over. MasterCard Memorial Cup on Rogers Sportsnet. And you thought we were past the infancy of the MasterCard Memorial Cup tournament. A new champion will be born Sunday, and with all due respect to the clubs left, pretty tough to top that team picture. Kevin, Cheryl Boston with two-month-old Keenan. Kevin or Cheryl, you got a beauty right there. Keenan was born right about the time this postseason odyssey started. It'll be a while before he can comprehend the pressure of this moment. A Memorial Cup semifinal between the Western Hockey League champion Kootenai Ice and the host Mississauga St. Michael's Majors. Darren Millard along with Nick Kiprios and Doug McLean continuing coverage in Rogers Sportsnet of the MasterCard Memorial Cup. Two teams that have already played in this tournament, two clubs that were off to slow starts. Are the Majors close to being on top of their game, Doug? Well, I don't think so yet. I mean, I think this is going to be a big test, and I'll tell you where it's got to start. It's got to start with the Zizekas line. He's got to get this line going. I mean, you've got Shug and smith Pelly, three players that should be dominant players, and as a trio, they should be dominant. They've been better recently, but they've got to be a lot better tonight. The task at hand tonight is can Zizekas line match up against Cody Eakins line. I think that's a tough challenge for them. If they are successful at matching up against the Eakin line, I think they have a good chance to win this hockey game. If they don't, I think they're going to struggle. The two top lines spent a lot of time on the ice against each other yep. in that 2-1 victory for Mississauga in the round robin. It cost Kootenai eight players for Cody Eakin from Swift Current of the trade deadline. One roster player, seven prospects and draft choices. Has it paid off? Uh, absolutely. I, I think he's going to be the best player on the ice. And Cody Eakin uh, got the offense going the other night with two goals and an assist. I didn't think he got off to the best start in this tournament, but he's really picked up. And now he's going to be instrumental in hoping to get uh, Kootenai to a final game Sunday. You know, the, the good thing about Cody Eakin is he doesn't have to score. I mean, he does everything so well at both ends of the ice. And that, uh, you know, if you go back to the Western Conference Final, he was instrumental in shutting down Braden Shen when they got past Saskatoon. But here's that 21, that or that 2 on 1 that shows tremendous skill here. That's a world class play, boys, in any league. And a short handed one. And short handed at oh, one. And, Mac, you know what? He's, he's, tonight's going to be his 87th hockey game, which is a huge a number for Major Junior A. And the question is, does he have any more hey. in the tank? I wouldn't underestimate this guy. And a lot of the a pressure, great hockey a player. lot of the big pressure games. He won the draw on that two-on-one -on -one that yeah. led to the shorthanded goal as well. Peter Labardius and Sam Cosentino will call this game. As mentioned, low-scoring affair during the round robin, which makes the guys in the cage very critical. I cannot agree more. For my money, these one-game showdowns always seem to boil down to the guys between the four by six, and I really wouldn't expect anything different here this evening. No question, and two guys who have played a ton. Let's start with J.P. Anderson of the Mississauga St. Michael's Majors. He has played every second of every minute of every postseason game for Dave Cameron. He's really athletic, covers the lower part of the net well, and a guy who I think never panics. He just seems so calm back there. One thing he does is face shots intermittently, but he's used to that. The next thing, he faces a lot of shots from the perimeter, and so if you get tight and get down on him, you may be able to have some success against him. 
When I look at the Kootenai Ice and talk about Nathan Lewin, early in his career, especially when we saw him in 2009 at the top prospects game, he was a very technically sound goaltender. But he's matured, he's become more receptive to goaltending coach Justin Cardinal's thoughts. Now he's not only technically sound, but when the situation calls for it, he's become a much more athletic goaltender. That has made him highly effective, and he hasn't yet played his best hockey in this event. Keys to the game are brought to you by Irwin Tools, makers of Groove Lock Vice Grip pliers. A simple push of a button adjusts jaws two times faster. Visit Irwin.com for more. And Sunday night in the round robin meeting, Darren, I think you would agree, both of those guys acquitted themselves quite nicely. In academic circles, an F translates into failure. Not inside the arena at the MasterCard Memorial Cup. Rob Flick has answered Matt Frazier's brilliance as both search for a spot in the final. We started with four, down to a pair tonight on Roger Sportsnet. The MasterCard Memorial Cup on Rogers Sportsnet. Brought to you by MasterCard. For everything you need to compete this season, there's MasterCard. By Old Dutch. Look for Old Dutch chips, salsa, pretzels, nuts, and more in your favorite store. Old Dutch, the official chip of the CHL. And by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Feed your wild side. This is the eighth game in eight days at the MasterCard Memorial Cup tournament. Everybody gets a day off tomorrow, meaning Kootenai and Mississauga are playing for the right to go back to work on Sunday. With more on that, let's go to the ice and Rob Fultz. With Joe Cramoroso of the Mississauga St. Michael's Majors, we're getting the feeling now as we watch, we're starting to see Majors hockey be played. That you're really getting into the flow, the way you guys play during the season. Uh, yeah. Uh, just uh, ever since that game seven, we've come back really hard. We've gone better every game in this tournament, and uh, I think we're at the top of our game now, and hopefully we can win tonight and make our way to the final. What is it you want to do in the first period of this game against Kootenai? Uh, we just want to be hard on the puck, get pucks deep, be physical. They played last night. We roll four lines. So uh, I think, honestly, I think we're the be best conditioned team in the league, potentially the CHL. So if we go hard for 60 minutes, I don't think anyone can keep up with us. Good luck to you tonight. Thank you. Joe Cramarosa of the Majors, they're ready to go. The winner will be in the MasterCard Memorial Cup game on Sunday. Balzi created and donated in 1919. We are two games from a 93rd champion. St. John will get a shot at who will be determined tonight on Rogers Sportsnet. The puck put in play in the semifinal next. Back at the Hershey Center, getting set for the semifinal of the MasterCard Memorial Cup. Darren Millard, Doug McLean, and in the middle, alumni from the North Bay Centennials and Kitchener Rangers from your days back playing junior. 62 goal score. Can you believe it? 62. I can because you've told me enough times. But you know what? You were faster in junior with those Cooperall pants. You used to fly. When you got to the NHL, those big pants seemed to slow you down or something. I think if Cooper all stayed, you would have been a superstar in the <laughs> There's NHL. There's my buddy Brian Dobbin. We had some good battles. Look at the signatures I had on this hockey card. Same haircut. Hey, now because I was 17, I'm like, I, I may play in the NHL one day. I, I got to get a signature. Now, you were a player that got very close to a MasterCard Memorial Cup tournament, but not quite there. Well, back then, uh, I believe it was uh, 86 or 87, we played a Super Series to host the Memorial Cup. We went seven games with the Oshawa Generals and lost it and met them about a month later in an OHL final and lost that in seven games. When it was all said and done, I think we, we, we battled the Oshawa Generals maybe close to 20 times mm -hmm. that season. Think about it, 20 times one Amazing. team. And there's still a, a little bit of animosity between you and Sherry Bassin as you walk by a couple of times. <laughs> he gives it to me every time he sees me about the Super Series. Did that prepare you and uh, allow you to appreciate your championships, New York Rangers? You wear the ring, a Calder Cup championship as well? Yeah, without a doubt. Uh, and the, the taste in your mouth. And I know all these guys are champions from their respective leagues, but this is the one that they want. This is the one that they're going to remember the most on a national scale. And uh, these opportunities uh, are far and few. They're, they're out there going to make the most out of it, Mac. And, and when you really think about this tournament, this would be like the Stanley Cup winner going the next week and playing in a round-robin tournament for nine days. This is one of the. T this is the toughest championship to win in all of hockey. No doubt about it. The closest field that we've seen in a number of oh. years. So very. 
a little separating the two teams that we'll see tonight, and we witnessed that in the round robin, Doug. Yeah, they really are close. I mean, and I think it comes down to St. Mike's and Kootenai. Kootenai rebounding. This is going to be a terrific game, and what a, a matchup this is going to make for the final against St. John. Either of these teams, can Kootenai go three, four nights in a row and be able to maintain? Or does Mississauga get in there and make this one of the great championships to have the home team as a champion? Kootenai enacted some revenge against Owen Sound last night. This evening, they'll try to eliminate the Mississauga St. Michael's Majors as we send you to Tony Ambrosio. At this time, we'd ask that you please rise and remove your hats and join Nicole Biblo in the singing of our national anthem. Canada, terre de nos aïeux, ton front est saint de fleurir en glorie. With glowing hearts we see thee rise, the true north strong and free. From far and wide, O oh Canada, we stand on guard for thee. It's a valeur de voir tromper, protéger à nos foyers et nos droits. Happy birthday to St. Mike's and Ottawa Senators owner Eugene Melnick. And is there a better present than joining the panel? Eugene Melnick will be up with us during the first intermission after we get through the opening 20 minutes called by Sam Cosentino and Peter Labardis. Thank you. Semi-final Friday night of the MasterCard Memorial Cup. And get right into the action. Log on to sportsnet.ca to watch live streaming of our wireless camera between the benches and on the ice. It can only be seen at sportsnet.ca. And the starting goaltenders for this elimination game and the right to play St. John Sunday night for all the marbles. Brought to you by Dickies, the official workwear partner of the Western Hockey League, the OHL, and the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. Nathan Lewin makes his fifth start of this tournament. One night ago in a victory over Owen Sound in the tiebreaker, he turned aside 28 of 31. At the other end, the 19-year-old from Toronto, Ontario, J.P. Anderson, Wednesday in a game that clinched a berth into this semifinal affair. He stopped in that contest versus Owen Sound. 21 of 22 in a 3-1 victory. Cody Eakin, two goals and an assist last night, Sam. In the all-important affair as this team plays its third game in four nights. And facing him will be the captain, Casey Sezikis. Two players really similar. They're not superstars. They're great two-way players. They're exceptional leaders. And they tend to do a lot of things right and be the mirror of what their coaches want them to be. Two perfect captains. Two teammates at the World Junior Hockey Championship in Buffalo. Hoping to make their way to another title game here this evening. When they met in the round robin on Sunday night, Rob Flick scored with 8.09 left in regulation to give the host side a 2-1 victory. And we are underway and glad to have you with us. Flick starts the game with D'Souza and Riley Grace. Grace backhands it by the next to D'Souza. Backhander right through the slide. And a penalty early in the game, and it's going to the champions of the Western Hockey League. Flick turned back by Cody Eakin. D'Souza and Eakin slides it away from him, and the stoppage and the penalty. Now the Mississauga St. Michael's Majors go on the offensive after losing the opening draw, able to 
use a cross ice pass to gain the zone. And D'Souza here is hit by Eakin as he backhands this no look pass in front of the net. And as a result of that, Cody Eakin will go to the box and a tough situation for Kootenay to be in right off the hop. It's a boarding call. And arguably Kootenay's best penalty killer. An early power play for Justin Shug and Mississauga. They're just over 13% and just one out of nine Wednesday in the win over Owen Sound. Devontae Smith-Telly can return it. Down low, Justin Shug. They move it around the perimeter. And pressure by Matt Frazier. Smith-Telly, he scores! Devontae Smith-Telly, 103 in. Well, Peter, Kootenay is used to getting off the slow starts, and here they give up a power play in the first 34 seconds, and Mississauga has struggled so mightily in this department that they take advantage, and it's thanks to an adjustment. Devontae smith pelly slides up, and you have a 1-3-1 one -one situation create itself. Percy makes a good decision, draws Martin down, looks like he's going to take it to the net. Instead, he goes across the seam, and Devontae smith pelly doesn't get all of it, but he surely gets enough of it. A good adjustment there by Mississauga on the power play to open the score. Second of the MasterCard Memorial Cup for the Anaheim second rounder. Devontae smith Pelly and Mississauga looking for more. With that touch, Rio on the ice. Benoit trying to move it out of his own territory, slides it off the boards to center. Percy will draw an assist and will wait for the other. A great start for the host team. Kootenay has trailed in their last two victories, two to nothing. They really felt, Sam, like that couldn't happen again. But a tough situation for the Kootenay Ice. And let's take a look at this uh, power play situation here. What we have is essentially a 1-3-1. And as we clear it and let it roll for you, watch the pass come through the seam right here from Percy to Devontae smith Pelly. Everyone drawn down, Max Hart leaves his position, and as he's drawn down, the seam opens up smith Pelly with the one-timer. One-nothing Mississauga. smith Pelly scored 15 to tie for the Ontario Hockey League lead in goals in the postseason. As his second in this tournament. Mayor Cramarosa. With Maxim Kitson. Mayor trying to slide it in front. Jagger Dirk broke it up, and back comes Max Reinhardt. Reinhardt with six points in those two Kootenay wins. And a key line with Matt Fraser and Drew Terwong is Kipson into the zone. It has his first drive block. Kipson, the sixth round pick of the Los Angeles Kings. And he's had some good moments in the event. Canton drives the other assist, by the way, on the Smith Pelly goal along with Percy. D'Souza turning back in his own zone. He had a lot of jump in the morning skate. He was being the agitator he normally is. He was all over Greg Such. He was all over Corey Bureau. Having a good time at the morning skate with Susie. He's got jump here tonight, too. Rintoul hits the referee, breaks into the slot, flip! A high rising snapshot that tested Nathan Lewin. Flicks had a very successful tournament. Lewin tested once again. And the Kootenay Ice in the first two games didn't get any points out of Fraser and Reinhardt. But in games three and four, boy, have they ever stepped up their game and have combined for 11 points. Those two gentlemen will need to come to the fore offensively once again for Kootenay. Two gentlemen during the Western Hockey League playoffs that combined for 54 points. They both ended the Western Hockey League playoffs with 27 apiece. And Fraser, 17 goals led the WHL. Four in his last two games here. Braden McNabb, the captain. Remember, he missed the first meeting of these teams on Sunday as a result of a suspension. Isman backhands it in. Eakin on the floor check against Brett Fleming. And Fleming and Percy probably matched against Eakin most of the night. Devontae Smith Kelly slides it through the crease. Fleming, a heavy collision as he runs over Jesse Isman. He's built quite well, Fleming, and he'll surprise you. He's a small guy, but he's got a, a lot of strength. Takes a run at Kevin King, the 21 year old from Calgary. And about as intense a player as you can find.
Peter, uh, we had a good conversation with him after the morning skate. He just conducts himself like a pro. I think he's going to will himself to play, too, despite the fact that he's undersized. Boomer jumps on a turnover in front. Good stick lift by guess who? Fleming. That may have prevented an equalizer. Putney trying to settle their game down. Another tough start for the Western Hockey League champions, giving up that early power play marker. Percy to Jamie Wise. Rink wide on the tape of Greg Sutch with Corey Giro back in the lineup tonight, number 14. Sutch slides it in behind the net and he'll head off for the change. Dagger Dirk crunched by Jamie Wise. And Wise threw a somewhat controversial hit in the win over Owen Sound on Wednesday. Jeffrey Shamich in the corner. Penalty on its way to the majors now as Luke Paulson was held. This penalty will go against Max Kitson. And one thing Dave Cameron will want his players is get your feet moving. Get on the right side of the puck so you're not chasing pucks. And when you chase pucks, here's what happens. Circles the net, Kitson, and just throws the arm around the hip of Paulson. It pulls him off stride. You're that far away from your own net. No need to take that penalty. The ice with their first opportunity with a man advantage. 28.6% in the tournament. Two for seven in the tiebreaker win last night versus Owen Sapp. And a chance to draw even here in the first period of this semifinal affair. The winner to face the Quebec League champion St. John Sea Dogs Sunday right here on Rogers Sports Day. Braden McNabb. He'll rag the puck towards center of the Buffalo third rounder. And Fraser impatient is offside. McNabb no doubt will be a huge story in this game because in the first round Robin game he was suspended thanks to this hit on Joey Hishin. It was an elbow to the head of Hishin that essentially eliminated him from the tournament. After a meeting with Brian Lewis and the three commissioners, it was decided that McNabb was suspended for one game. That game happened to be against Mississauga in the round robin. You know he's juiced for tonight's tilt and should definitely have an impact on this game. A product of Davidson, Saskatchewan, Braden McNabb. Another player with 27 points. In the Western Hockey League playoffs, the lead all defenseman in that category. Hayden Rintoul, gloved down by Cramarosa. He can't clear. However, Stewart Percy will. And Kootenay with a minute to try and get this power play on track that's been very good in their two wins. Elgin Pierce scampers in on the floor check to Susan. On his stick it up. And the former London Knight wearing 28 does have a lot of jump in this first period. He's an energy guy for Dave Cameron's team. Yet to supply any offense. But Dave Cameron will take a lot more of that. As D'Souza sends it down the ice. Sam Kootenay looks like it's having trouble finding its legs in a second of a back-to-back -back and third in four nights. Interesting to me in that, again, off to a slow start. And including the power play with Max Kitson on the box. We'll look at what Kootenay does here on the power play. They'll overload the right side. And then as they get to the line, Mississauga's Cramorosa slips off his check. He's able to intercept that pass. Now it took him a second to get the clearing attempt down the ice. But Mississauga doing a great job making it tough for Chris Knobloch's Kootenay ice to enter the zone of the power play. And penalty killing's been a bit of a concern in the tournament for Mississauga at 73.3, although they did kill off all four Owen Sound power plays in the win on Wednesday. You get into these one-game situations, you talk about goaltending, special teams, and the ability to win one-on-one -on -one battles. Kenton, hard shoulder check that knocks Steel Boomer down, but Boomer bounced right back up as the penalty to Kitson is expired. McNabb at the line, Braden McNabb. Blocked by Fleming, and Fleming the outlet to find Justin Judd, who locates it and escapes before clearing it in. An early power play goal by Devontae smith Pelly has the host team in front. His second of this tournament. Rock Flick has two in the tournament. Riley Brace and McNabb, Reinhardt shots at it. Joey Leach will take over the Calgary third rounder. He hits Smith Pelly, and Smith Pelly kept it in for a second. Flick 
to Dylan DeMello. And Smith Pelly off the linesman, and now he'll race in against McNabb on a hard score check. And there's a play that would indicate a guy might be ready for the next level pretty soon. From McNabb, Terwaka, Fraser off the outside of the net from Fraser, who's got the hot stick again. And a hard shot. Terrific release from the Red Deer product. Steven Corinthian to Brace, who corrals it now before shooting it, but not as deep as he would have liked. Reinhardt, a little extra for Riley Brace. These teams are both very structured in their approach. And you'll see a lot of play in the neutral zone. Both teams really trying to manage the puck in the neutral zone. Jagger Dirk stopped up by Such. He hurt himself big time. Such is in trouble, dropped his stick and will receive some attention. The fifth round pick of the Buffalo Sabres, Drake Such. Wise spot the stick and they'll blow it down. Such on his way to the room. Canton says hello to Steel Boomer. With Majors coach and general manager Dave Cameron, it appears that you guys have wanted to come out and play the body. Very physical start. Yeah, that's part of our game plan, that we also want to push the pace. You know, we got four lines that can go. We want to keep the ships shifts 40, 45 seconds, and we want to go at them. Because they played last night and they've been very busy of late, is that also an advantage, try to get them tired? Well, that's a strategy we take against most teams. But, yeah, the fact that this is their back-to-back -back game should help us a little bit. Thank you, Coach. Dave Cameron's team has a 1-0 lead on a power play go goal by Devontae smith Ellie. That goal came 103 into this opening period of the semifinal. Flex line against Eakin. But it's Percy and Fleming on the ice defensively when you see Eakin's line. And Kootenay, who gave up a power play goal, is going to be penalized once again. Yeah, the rough stuff continues to uh, play a factor in this game. Early on, Fleming getting involved with King, and then a big bump on Jesse Edmund. Mark Canton steps in to steal Boomer. And Greg Such here takes out Jagger Dirk, but in the process, I think he ruins his left shoulder, and he left the game and went down the tunnel. Martin coming up on D'Souza, and so he's called for elbowing. Second power play for the majors. Doug McLean talked about that off the top. How critical this is Saga's power play and refinding its form would play a key role. And they capitalize quickly on their first drop. Joey Leach brings it. Percy, nice work to hold it in the right point. And Tiller scored a key shorthanded goal last night versus Owen Jab. Nice knocked down in front by McNabb. Great stick, great hand eye. Sezikis trying to control it. And one more time, chopped away. Mark Kent picked up an assist, as did his, his defensive partner Percy on that power play goal. Kichi Sezikis let it go. Reinhardt fanned, but it was enough to make his way out of Kootenay territory. Stewart Percy, eligible for the upcoming draft, and you think, stock rising. Garazio to shoot in. Great McNabb, a rolling puck, and he'll send it full length to the ice. Disjointed for that first power play unit, and the unit that's had more success here with the extra man has been Mississauga's second unit. That includes Flick, Mayer, and Max Kitz. Garazio, a backhander. Here comes the on charging Rod Flick with Maxim Kitson. Fleming, Fleming a wrister. That goes wide to the target. Jordan Mayer to Max Kitson. Protects it well. Kitson. Still hangs on to Fleming again. Fleming moves down in the seam. Didn't deliver it. For a one time of the way he wanted, Kitson snapped it with authority over top of the net. Penalty to Martin Abuktu come to an end. Mayor knocked down by Rintoul as play carries on. 
and the puck flipped in and Kitson and the Majors clear the zone so Kootenai with an important kill trailing 1-0 here in the first. Fraser a kick pass to Brendan Hurley and there's the first shot on goal for the Kootenai Ice. And that's what we talked about a lot of shots from the perimeter and as a result of that J.P. Anderson uses those hard pads and kick stuff into the corner. Took Kootenai over 11 minutes to register it. Mississauga's been near perfect in this first period. Jagger dirt pressured by Bureau. Look out! Steamrolled by Wise. Tramarosa. More worried about Bureau chasing him down, and as a result of that, was more heard the footsteps, but didn't hear the ones coming from the front in the form of Jamie Wise. The Majors continue to deal plenty of physical blows. Intercepted nearly by King, jumped away from a flick, leading a three on two. D'Souza flip. Lewin got over and might have kept it up with his blocker stiff. Tremendous save. That's part of the athleticism we talked about with Nathan Lewin before the game. Seems to make all those saves when you really need them to be made. Rinfield can't clear it in. All Mississauga in this first period, even though they've only officially registered four shots themselves. But have possessed the puck for a long time, especially in the offensive zone. Aiden Rintoul, the defenseman from Calgary, off Cody Eakin. Couple of Washington picks after it, along with the goalie. And Eakin's going to be penalized. Suzekis with speed into the attacking zone. Drops and Smith Kelly. Couldn't handle it cleanly as he's involved with Cherwanka, but cooler heads will prevail. Jagger, Dirk, that wasn't a wise decision. Thanks, Ken. Cody Eakin goes to the box for goaltender interference. As the puck is dumped in, Eakin is first in on it. He chops down on the stick of Fleming, and then he trips up J.P. Anderson, who came out to try and play the puck. For that, he goes to the box, and you can tell by the look in his face, he knew exactly what he had just committed. Second penalty for Cody Eakin. He was in the penalty box when Devontae Smith Kelly opened the scoring. 103 in. Double jeopardy is one of the best penalty players. Stewart Percy looks for a shooting lane. Backhand pass. Can Justin Shug? Blocked off by Martin. He's been rather silent the whole tournament, Justin Shug. One goal into an empty net to ice the game Wednesday versus Owen Sound. And that's why he was on the ice in that situation. Ken through a screen, nearly made its way in. Ken with it again in his third MasterCard Memorial Cup. Tip by Sezekis. Bouncing puck. And Lewin found it just in the nick of time as Leach and Sezekis into it a little bit. To the winner of this contest, a date with the St. John Sea Dogs, the Quebec League champions, in the MasterCard Memorial Cup Championship game. We will begin at 7. 4 o'clock Pacific time, and don't miss that one. Well, the Sea Dogs got a good skate this morning in. Worked hard by head coach Gerard Gallant. After a couple of easy days, they decided to get after uh, get after pretty good today. Sea Dogs ranked for the most part all year in the CHL. Number one, 58 regular season wins. They went 16 and three in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League playoffs to win the title, and now have a chance to win it all and cap off a brilliant campaign Sunday night. But the winner of this game will provide excellent opposition. Power play continues for the Majors. Lewin steers it on the boards, and Antilla will backhand it down the ice. And this is Saga got what it needed from the first power play, but the next one after that, and the better part of this one, have not been very good. Fleming the shoot in, McNabb will handle it. He'll backhand it around the boards. Garazio trying to keep it in, able to do so. Gets it, top of the circle, dishes off. Fleming, wrist shot from Fleming. And it'll go all the way back down 
into the major zone. So important to hit the net. We've seen Mississauga do that on several occasions, especially with the weak side defenseman pinching down. A shot from a bat angle misses the net, goes off the corner boards and out of the zone. Eakin returns to the ice. Trying to backhand it out. He does. Big hit by Brock Montgomery. Nearly allowed Cody Eakin to get away. Joey Lee. Pressure and crunch, but in an illegal manner, according to the referee this time, by Jamie Wise, charging the call against the former Peterborough Pete. And the Western League champions on the power play when we return. An exciting second intermission on Sunday of the MasterCard Memorial Cup. It is the Old Dutch shoot for a million. A contestant has an opportunity to shoot and take home one million dollars, courtesy of Old Dutch. Is also an opportunity to shoot for two hundred fifty thousand and one hundred thousand dollars. That's during the second intermission on Sunday. Well, should be exciting for sure. During the uh, television timeout, Chris Knobloch had both his first and second units over at the bench with the chalkboard out. So it'll be interesting to see that once the puck gets cleared, if they've changed anything on the entrance into the zone here and made an adjustment. Kootenai over one did not register a shot with that power play here in the first. Devontae Smith Kelly has a power play goal, which has the majors in front. Can't pass Braden McNabb and down the ice. Reinhardt McNabb, Eakin Fraser, and Boomer on the power play. It's Bureau, Canton Fleming, and Kremerosa. Fraser shoots it in. Canton locks it in. And Anderson tried to clear it. There's nice hand eye by Reinhardt, who has six points in the tournament. Fraser looking for some room to shoot it. Reinhardt, the son of Paul Reinhardt, and McNabb shot. Held on to by J.P. Anderson. Good battle in front of the net, but J.P. Anderson has the lane cleared for him just as this shot comes. Mark Canton working on Steel Boomer. And Anderson with a 9.30 save percentage coming into this game. Finished second in the Ontario Hockey League's Goaltender of the Year Award. Won by Niagara's Mark Byzantine. Went to Canada's World Junior Selection Camp in December. Did not make that team. Guy you talked about did. He's in goal and counted a loss to the Russian in the final. Cramarosa backhander down the ice. One minute to go and the penalty to Jamie Wise, who's made his presence felt physically. Cramarosa steals from Kevin King and shoots at the distance. Although it was a turnover, again, very evident how Mississauga's protecting that blue line, making it tough for Kootenai on the end. Into a soft chip in towards Kevin King. King with help from Elgin Pierce and Jesse Isman. Marshall Pinch takes a wall from D'Souza but made the play. Martin swings it for Rintoul. Rintoul back to the line and James Martin just keeps it in. Rintoul King who has a good shot but fan on the one time. Pierce. Battles for possession. Martin loses it. Here comes D'Souza. Short-handed. D'Souza! Stopped by Lewin, who came way out. King, three on two late in the power play. And an offside as Mississauga nearly got caught with too many. And then the ice went offside. D'Souza, after that slap shot, made his way to the bench, but realized he was the last guy back. He turned back to the middle of the ice. Justin Shug had hopped over the boards. And then he hopped back quickly. And you'll have a look at D'Souza. Look, he's going to the bench right here and realizes, hey, I better get back in the play. Shug, top of your screen, left side of your screen, rather, hops the boards, hops right back out. It was all for naught as it was the offside. But D'Souza has come with a lot of jump in this game. And he can do a lot of good things for you with his speed, his ability to kill penalties. And doesn't mind the rough and tumble type of game either. New minute penalty to Jesse Isman at the end of that spray. And the majors for the fourth time in the period on the power play. Really didn't see that one. Suzekis 
Big shot. Fraser trying to send it out. Couldn't quite corral the puck. Zizekas for shot. Fraser anticipates. Kenton blocked by Leach. That had to hurt. And that's not the first time in the event he's taken one like that. Remember Jelena the other night off the inside of his knee. Sezikis backhands it in front. Leach on his knees broke that up. What an effort by Leach. You gotta love it. McNabb soft to Fraser. Will skate with Reinhardt. Block shot by Kent. As Leach makes his way to the bench. Those are the kind of shifts that help you win large games. Can't win championships without it. Tripped up at the line. And McNabb will backhand it. Durazio takes over. 40 seconds to go on this power play. Late stages of period one. Back to that second unit power play. And again, starting to become an issue for Mississauga. Fleck into the corner against McNabb. Fleming is shot, tip, flip, had some room and couldn't get his stick on it. Good play by Eakin, here he comes with Antilla. They combined for a shorty last night. And the save made by Anderson. Jordan Mayer to Kipson, leaves it for Rob Fleck. Rintoul intercepts, and out of the box comes Isman. Another kill for Putin. And Tillon to Rintoul. He'll spin. It was going wide. Kicked away by Anderson. Another slugfest between <laughs> these two teams. Canton puts on the brakes in a hurry to Kipson. Flicks out of gas. And is heading to the bench. He's leaned over. Dude, couldn't accept that pass. He didn't have anything left. <laughs> Nothing left in the tank. Bramarosa into the zone, broken up by Leach, and King is time winds down. Watch one last crack, King into the zone, good stick by DeMello, and that'll do it for the opening 20, and it ends with another crunch. Just as you would expect, but again, the Kootenai Ice come out with a first period subpar. You know, they talked about it yesterday, they got a real good talking to after the first period yesterday by Chris Knobloch. We'll see how that pans out here tonight. However, they're only down by one as we send it to our Hockey Central panel. Guys? Peter, Sam, Kootenai Ice have only scored first once in this tournament, and they lost that game, so maybe they're feeling that it's bad luck, along with Nick Kiprios and Doug McLean, Darren Millard, and the Hockey Central panel, third level here at the Hershey Center. Referees have had a large impact in this tournament, good and bad. What do you think of the call, especially the early one? Well, I get the kids are a little rambunctious, and their tendency is to just uh, uh, push the envelope and sometimes break it open. But, you know, I didn't like this uh, this call on Eakin here. I, I didn't see the physical force to really think that uh, it was a dangerous hit or a hit from behind or a boarding call. Uh, you know, I, I, I wish they would let those go. I, I really do. I, I thought it set a bad tone uh, to start the game. And we talked about the importance of uh, Mississauga's power play coming alive. Well, it came alive on the very first one on a great play. You saw some good traffic in the net, and Smith Pelly is able to slide a little high in the slot. Real important to get off the snide. This power play has been really struggling. Puck comes down low, and all of a sudden you'll see Smith Pelly slide to that high slot area and pick it off with a nice scoring chance there. Great pass and a quick one timer. Now they have three other power plays, and I thought the second unit of Mayer and Flick really got it going as well. So really interesting if they can keep both groups going. Sazik's group, Mayer's group with Kitson, and also. Uh, Flick. So really important to see two groups moving the puck pretty well and on no the doubt, power play. No doubt Mississauga's strategy is to take advantage of a tired hockey club, one that played 24 yeah. hours ago. They got the, uh, the the power play goal in the early lead. But they've left a lot on the table with all those other power plays, yeah. uh, trying to capitalize on that. Rob Falds at ice level when we continue. And Eugene Melnick with the Hockey Central Panel, the owner of the Ottawa Senators and the Mississauga St. Mike's Majors. Enjoying this one, 63 seconds. Devontae smith pelly gave his team a 1-0 lead.
The MasterCard Memorial Cup on Rogers Sportsnet. Brought to you by MasterCard. For everything you need to compete this season, there's MasterCard. By Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Feed your wild side. By your local insurance broker. Your best insurance is an insurance broker. The Western Hockey League, the Children's Hospital Foundation of Saskatchewan, Scotiabank and a group of Western Hockey League alumni led by Kelly Chase, Dave Sharchi and Curtis Lachishan are ready to raise a little money for the Children's Hospital Foundation of Saskatchewan. It is the WHL Ride for Kids. Things will start off in Prince Albert, Saskatchewan on June 5th. It's the first leg of a bike relay starting the morning of June 6th and they will stop in all of the Saskatchewan WHL centers. It's a great opportunity to raise a lot of money for the Children's Hospital Foundation of Saskatchewan and lots of the big stars. Jordan Everly, Luke Shen, Mike Sillinger will be taking part. Ron, nothing is the score for Mississauga after the opening period. Pete, Sam, I just saw Greg Such. He is not in uniform and his left forearm is wrapped from elbow to fist. Yeah, and they figured he might have uh, had a, a left shoulder injury, but the way he just grabbed it, he knew it was something on the left side. And for Such, he really gives Dave Cameron fourth line minutes. Uh, his energy and speed will be missed. First period scoring summary brought to you by Ram, the official truck of the CHL. Four power plays for Mississauga. They were able to capitalize on one of those, and they lead the shots on goal department 7-5, although it took Kootenay about 11 minutes to register its first shot on goal. We've talked about so many periods in this MasterCard Memorial Cup not being for the faint of heart. The opening 20 loaded with big blows delivered and the majority by the host team. Well, Mississauga wanted to come out with the big physical presence because it knew that Kootenai coming off a, a win last night and having to play 24 hours later figured they could take advantage with some good physical play. Kootenai killing off three of four Mississauga power plays. Shot with Suzekas and Devontae Smith Kelly and Shut got gobbled up by Nathan Lewin. Been tough luck for Shug and Nathan Lewin, who has had to be sharp. Again, intermittent shots on goal, and sometimes that's even tougher for a goaltender. Shug with seven points in last year's MasterCard Memorial Cup as a member of the winning team, the Windsor Spitfire. He's won this event two times in a row. Trying to make history by winning a third straight. And the role has changed deeper each and every year. And the responsibility placed on Chuck has increased each and every year. Now he's to be in a top-line leadership role. A goal and an assist in this event for Chuck is Kootenai with Benoit, Boomer, and Tillett. They got Kootenai on the board last night after trailing 2-0. Here's Chuck with Smith Pelly joining him. The trailer Sizikas. And Boomer on the back check ended up taking the net off its horns. Well, good chance for Mississauga. As for Smith Pelly and his line mate Justin Chug trying to become just the second player ever to win three straight MasterCard Memorial Cups. Robert Savard did it with Cornwall and Kitchener in the early 80s. Ryan Huska, Tyson Nash, and Darcy Tucker all played in three, but they missed the 93 season. And Shug waiting for the trailer, Sezekis. You'll see Mississauga do that so often. It was a bit of a disjointed rush, but they like to send three guys in and then slowly separate from one another to create that triangle. Sioux St. Marie Graham, Gary Bass, and Ted Nolan in the middle of that Kamloops run of three and four. With Kurt, the representative of the Western Hockey League that year, it went 0 3, which was stunning back then. Rintoul loves it down, looking for a shooting lane. Tries to distribute, well out of the reach of his windows on the ice with Cody Eakin and Kevin King. Flick fans runs into Cherwaka, good battle. Cherwaka up in it. Riley Brace a safe play out of the zone. D'Souza on side at the line. D'Souza trying to go to the net, swept away by Eakin. D'Souza still with it. He's had a strong game. Michael Garazio banks it off the end boards. Wanted the puck to come out front. Didn't turn out. And King 
Backhands it out of the zone. Nearly too many again for Mississauga. Get into those big pressure situations. You want to get out and help your team as much as you can. But you can't get out there too early. When you look at the tiebreaker, the road that the Kootenai Ice is going to have to take. And the record for those who win the tiebreaker, just two and six, they've been outscored 40 to 21. And the 2009 Windsor Spitfires, the only team to take the tiebreaker route to win the MasterCard Memorial Cup. The other team to make it as far as the final in recent history is a penalty coming up. Drew Cherwanka takes a high stick. Will it be two or four? Gibson looks like he's going to the penalty box. The other team was Victoriaville, Sam, back in 2002, who, by the way, got there and faced off against Kootenai in that final. You see the stick, Kitson with the stick lift on Chirwanka, and comes right up and hits him in the chops. And the year the ice won the MasterCard Memorial Cup in 02. Well, by Terry. Terry Stoll, Nigel Dawes. Players on that team, Colin Sinclair. Shug, a backhander, is Cooney on the power play. They'd love to win another MasterCard Memorial Cup in their third appearance in the event. Fleming with that good speed, wheels away from Eakin. That's not easy. And almost wound up with a shorthanded situation as McNabb delivers an extra blow and referee Matt Kirk, the Western Hockey League referee of the year, says no. Braden McNabb at the end of the play, once it's called offside, Fleming gets spun around and McNabb doesn't change his course of direction at all. Fleming goes to the ice and for the most part in this game it's been Mississauga initiating. Three assists for McNabb in the tournament. Hayden Rintu. Looked at Isman, still stick handling. But does make its way to Jesse Isman, who has a goal in the event. Kick. And boards Isman against DeMello with help from Boomer. Kootenai on the cycle on the power play, though. Rich shot, well wide of the target. Kevin King. Plays it off for Martin, the Winnipeg. James Martin drops it. Looks for a seam pass, did Martin. Martin threw the seam himself to Isman now. And King, some better puck movement by the ice. King loads it up, Boomer in front. And Wise, good chip. Good play by DeMello. Cramarosa into the zone with his feet. Cramarosa, Lou in a big save. Short-handed off Joseph Cramarosa. Fleming with time, short-handed to D'Souza. Skipper's hand and plenty on that high-rising wrist shot. Max Reinhardt trying to help out Martin. And an excellent job by Mississauga in this penalty kill. Terrific work by everyone involved. Bureau out of the pile, short angle. Off Lewin and Reinhardt, a crafty back pass to Fraser with Ann Killer. Fraser knocked off balance and had something to say about it. What, what? Ann Killer to Reinhardt, leaves it for Fraser with some room, fakes the shot. Fraser off the outside of the bar. Rock. Does he shoot any other things besides Rockets? Leach. Looked at Antilla as he distributes Reinhardt for Fraser. Fleming in good position. McNabb is shot through a screen, just missed. Reinhardt trying to jam it on the short side. And Kootenai with by far and away its best shift of the game. Well, good chance by Fraser. You know he can really fire it and starting to find his touch here in this tournament. It comes across the line, there's a little fake on Fleming and then unloads a rocket. And here's another look at it from that bad angle. It got a piece of J.P. Anderson first. But how about Dylan DeMello under pressure? A little chip by Wise off the board, supported nicely by Cramarosa. He'll cut to the middle of the ice, and while shorthanded, gets a great opportunity thanks to a very calm, cool, and collected play by Dylan DeMello. 
Luke Paulson. The 18 year old from Winnipeg was not drafted, he was a list player. Brock Montgomery. There's a jump away from him, and Devontae Smith Kelly was the only goal in the game. Enters the attacking zone on right wing. With Sezekis and Chuck, the number one trio for Dave Cameron's team. Martin and Leach out there defensively. Chuck trying to get free. Chuck just failed to make the connection with Devontae Smith Pelly. Hurley is spilled by Sezekis. And the captain is on his way to the penalty box. Top scores are brought to you by Presto. When you own it, press stone it. Andrew Shaw, what a great tournament for the Owen Sound attack, leading the way with seven points. Max Reinhardt, including a four assist effort, alone in second spot, and then a group of five tied with five points apiece, including Devontae Smith Kelly with the lone marker in this game here tonight. Really trying to leave the zone, and Sezikas comes across, and it's called knee. Hurley looking up right away, and Sezikas didn't think he was worthy of the penalty, but with the way things have been called tonight, no question that one was going to get called. And I think the captain just let the country and maybe North America know how he felt. Or maybe he was speaking Greek. No, I know those words. <laughs> <laughs> you and Kipper can but break it down at the intermission. Those are the only words in the language I basically know. <laughs> Fraser clears it in on a Kootenai power play. Cody Eakin to the line and Braden McNabb, the catalyst from the back on this man advantage. Eakin, great feed. Reinhardt's one-timer off the outside of the net. Perfectly set up by Cody Eakin. McNabb pressured by Cramarosa. Cramarosa dumped by Eakin who carries in Lee's and Fraser. Eakin, he'll shoot at Anderson the save. Up Cody Eakin. Ramarosa backhander, Reinhardt will hold it in. Max Reinhardt shovels it, blocked and cleared by Fleming. You know, Peter, Chris Knobloch had to do this yesterday. After the first period, down 2-0, no one sound, he went in the room and he ripped his guys. He tore a strip off him, up and down and sideways, and they responded really well thereafter. And I would have to think that that same speech or a reasonable facsimile was made tonight by Chris Knobloch. Big hit from Dylan Gamella, the London product. Isman one-hands it. Boomer protects it against Percy on the boards. Scrum ensues with just over 30 to go in the Kootenai power play. Martin, McNabb a block, big save rebound. Boomer couldn't get a stick on it. One of Anderson's best stops. McNabb again to Susan, the shooting lane and clears it. Is D'Souza with more yeoman's work in the game. James Martin last rush on this power play. Parente, pass shot, King keeps it in. Penalty to Sezikis is expired. Fleming can't move out of the zone versus Martin. Benoit treasures his man, Hurley comes late, Martin Hill wristed and Sezekis heads in the other direction with Shug and Riley Brakes. Feathered through and turned aside by Goldfinger Lewis. Great play by Leach. He took the stick and brace away. Pace quickens. Great move by Ash Tillis. And an excellent backtrack by the captain, Sezekis. Shug enters the zone. Justin Shugarister goes wide on the short side as it starts to pick up a little. So man to end, and there hasn't been much of that in either of the two games between these two combatants. Knock down, drag him out, corners in neutral zone. That's the definition of how this game has been played between these two clubs. Plus, there's just not a lot to separate the line. Antilla, bothered by Flick. To Luke Paulson. Paulson up the middle for Reinhardt. And icing is the call. You're watching semi-final Friday night at the MasterCard Memorial Cup on Roger Sportsnet. A one-goal game with Chris Knobloch behind the Kootenai ice bench. What was the message to your team in the first intermission? 
Well, first of all, we had stayed out of the penalty box. We had killed eight minutes of penalties. It's pretty hard to generate any offense. So this, this period, we've been able to do that. We um, had some quality chances, but we need to keep pushing. Are you trying to match their physical play? Well, I think that's just part of our style. We hit, we create stuff. So, um, yeah, they are being physical, but that's the way we play. So we, we, for us to be successful, it doesn't matter who we play, we need, we need that element. Thank you, Coach. one nothing the score with Mississauga in front. And that element not always easy to bring when it's a back-to-back -back situation, and there's no doubt that Mississauga has initiated that type of play. That Kootenay trying to respond to it. That goal was scored on a power play 103 into the game by Delonte Smith Kelly, his second of the tournament. One team one for four, the other team now 0 for four in the power play. And there's a big hit delivered by Brayden McNabb. There's a response from the captain on Jordan Mayer. Montgomery and Rister out there with Boomer and Antilla. It's a different combination for Chris Knobloch. Montgomery, good size. Antilla in a tussle with Parente. Won it. Parente quick to cut off any ice. And Kitson wheels to center. Kitson a shot held by Lewin. Well, Braden McNabb known for his physical play, not only his point production, but we have seen it all tournament long and all playoffs really. It's just a good step up here as Mayer comes across the ice. You take your life into your hands because McNabb sees it developing, comes right across the ice and delivers the shoulder right into the chest of Jordan Mayer. And at the last second, Mayer saw him. Had he not, the result would have been much different than that. The captain takes a seat after delivering that blow. Eakin off the draw control. King knocked away from him by Stuart Percy, who has an assist in the game. As Isman clears it deep, Anderson fires it to Sizikis. King on him in a hurry, along with Cody Eakin. Isman now to Cody Eakin. Back to the left point, Joey Leach. Leach off the end boards, and that nearly worked. Just failed to hit his man. At the other end, Sizikis was free, but it went off the heel of his stick on a great lead pass. The chances at both ends. Shug and Stewart Percy one time. Lewis kicked it away. There's the scoring chances. More evident in period two. Play opening up just a little bit, and some of that desperation knowing that, hey, this could be the end of our season, starting to heat up and creep into the minds of both of these hockey clubs. And for many, their major junior careers. Stuart Percy. Dustin Shug, high cross corner shooting for Riley Brace. Battling Paulson. Brace looks at Fleck. Has him. Still a lot on it, not sure how, but that's because he shoots it a ton. And he's got great strength, Rob Flake. Fourth round pick of the Chicago Blackhawks. Column four. Riley breaks to Dylan DeMello. One touch to Canton, returns it. DeMello through a screen, Lewin found it and stopped it. Pressure by Mississauga. Canton again, his wrister and Lewin had a pretty good look. And hangs on. It remains 1-0 for the host team. Thank you so much, Ken. Log on to sportsnet.ca for complete coverage of the MasterCard Memorial Cup. CHL columnist Patrick King is filing daily reports. He's typed so much, those hands are on fire. Fire, fire, fire. <laughs> nice work, Patrick. Some great reading all tournament long from Patrick King. Talking about fire, the red lights only come on one time in this semi-final affair. Benoit, he scored in the tiebreaker, a low wrister, picked out by T.P. Anderson. Durazio, just out of the zone. Shots on goal, 15 to nine in favor of Mississauga. Shot carries in, but Smith Pelly trapped on the offside. Recently signed by the Buffalo Sabres is uh, Braden McNabb. 
An interesting story about the Kootenai Ice. This is their third trip to the MasterCard Memorial Cup. They went in 2000, won it in 2002, and here they are in 2011. And for McNabb, he had heard a story about Yaroslav Sloboda, who played in the 2000 tournament, was great throughout the regular season, but had no points in three games after he signed. It felt like he didn't want to be that example, so he didn't tell anyone he signed. No. Didn't want anybody to know. Type of kitty. Didn't want the Svoboda thing coming back to haunt Kutney again. It's hard for these players when that enters the fray. They've got enough on their minds as it is. It's King, a shot, not a ton on it. Picked out by Anderson. King back out with Eakin and Ismick. Versus D'Souza, Brace and Fleck. This is really an excellent matchup, these two teams. They're the same. They're twins. Like looking in the mirror, for sure. 2-1 in their first meeting, and looks like it's headed right down that road again. Go, go, go! Cody Eakin. Long pass, misses Isman. Who will jump right on his own bench. Canton, the Bureau. Reinhardt looks at Paulson and comes over to cut it off and backhand it out again. Fraser an interception. Fraser! And a confident looking blood save by Anderson. Now Joe Cramarosa has given Dave Cameron a lot of great minutes, but on this particular play, as he's back passing, you can't get anything. He's back cycling, back cycling here. You can't get anything on the pass. And he's very lazy in protecting the puck there. Puts it right on the tape of Fraser. And that's the last guy whose tape you want to put it on. J.P. Anderson, though, did not fall asleep on it. Got way out and made a good stop. Fraser almost got directly to the net. Off the draw as he beat Mayer. Mayer with a puck down. Leaves it for Cramarosu, who remains out there and wise. Flips it in. Paulson bumped by Jordan Mayer. Terwaka takes his time on left wing. Terwaka away from Cramarosa. He'll enter the attacking zone, still in it. Before DeMello makes another nice play. It's been DeMello's best game of this MasterCard Memorial Cup. He's very, very subtle. He's not a huge point producer, but he really takes care of his own end of the ice. Rated for the upcoming National Hockey League draft is Dylan DeMello. 199th is rated. Fleming pressured by Max Reinhardt. Zizekas chips it, not out. McNabb able to keep it in and move it to Reinhardt with Benoit and Antilla in front. Rintu almost stepped on it. Zizekas. Offside will be the call. Well, this game is a lot like Old Dutch. It is Chip City. The ice is so tough to come by. As soon as that puck gets into the neutral zone, it's being chipped all over the place. And we thought that this game would be a battle of what happens between the blue lines, or at least five feet on either side of the blue line. Fighting for that ice, just oh so tough. And that little bit of ice, tough to come by. Ripple or sour cream? Ripple, sour cream, both double down. Thank you very much. Leach runs in the kitchen. Lewin was bumped by Flick. There'll be a penalty to the Majors. And Flick will not be happy because he felt that King pushed him into the goaltender, Lewin. Rod Flick's about to take a seat in the shin bit. Kootenai trailing. They're on their way to the power play. All the hockey players at the MasterCard Memorial Cup are playing for the ring, but Tiso is a proud partner of the MasterCard Memorial Cup in 2011, and in a random seat draw, Mark Cumberbatch here has won a special edition Steven Samko's Tiso watch. Daniel Roundsville, make the presentation of Mark Cumberbatch, who just happened to be in the right seat. Now, exactly what time is it? Let's try to, whatever it is, it's a great looking timepiece, and the time is perfect. Good, wow. look, good looking walk. Oh, yeah. We got the wrong seats up here. They're okay, though. I don't think we want to trade them. 1.45 to go in Kootenai's fifth power play. They trail it by one in this semifinal for the right to play St. John in the championship affair Sunday night. 
Fleming. Backhand, freezer from a sharp angle. Tried to bank it off Anderson and in. Back to Reinhardt. McNabb and Eakin now. Cody Eakin finds Fraser. McNabb. Eakin into the corner and Fraser. McNabb dishes off for Reinhardt to a back pedal towards the line. McNabb is shot. Didn't connect the way he would have liked. Eakin, nice work to hold it in, but Chug intercepts it. Sends it down the board. This is Saga really paying attention to the point. But when that happens and your PK stretches a little bit, the seam can open up. The attention to detail in this game has been terrific. Coaches, video, tweaking, adjustments. You gotta love it. All about Will. No question about the preparation. Bramarosa stops up Steel Boomer and sent down the ice by Wise. Well, not all the way because he hit the referee. They didn't like that at the Mississauga bench. Percy hooked off the puck. Gisman and Rintoul with traffic fakes it this Rintoul. Plays it to James Martin. Martin and King penalty to flicks over. Drop pass. Martin off the skate of Cramarosa. Novello off ring tool and out. So a fifth straight kill for Mississauga. King accepts. King whipped it off the stick of Anderson. Yeah, and off the shaft. King, like Fraser, can really get it to the net. Almost knocked the stick out of Anderson's hands. That would say rocket too. The Souza into the zone. D'Souza fans on his shot. Rintoul one hands it to James Martin. Up the middle to Brandon Hurley. Can't control the pass. The former Kootenai first round Bantam selection. Eric Benoit ruling puck. Hurley bucks with D'Souza. I'm sure this situation is reminding Kootenai a lot of the Moose Jaw series. Moose Jaw really played tough and physical in that first round and won two of the first three games against Kootenai. Shutout wins. Parente with room. Parente kick save by Lewin. Kitson. Garazio moves up now. Looks for the pass. Tips it neatly to Mayer. Smith Kelly off the bench. With a puck in the corner. Drags it neatly. Smith Kelly can shoot it. Scores! Devontae Smith Kelly showed you how he can shoot it. His second. Few players in the Canadian Hockey League can pull it off the boards like Devontae Smith Kelly. He curls and gets a step, and once he does that, he's got that lane to the net, and there's a bunch of different options for him. You'll see him enter the fray right here. Now he gets by his man, he can curl off the boards, avoids a check, top shelf. Not much you can do about that. I mean, Lewin is as far out as you could possibly get in this situation. He's a big, tall guy, but when you shoot it as well as Devontae Smith Kelly, it makes it awfully tough on a goaltender. Fraser into the zone. Kootenai for a third straight game. Trails two to nothing. But this a little late. And both of those games were elimination games. Both of those games are games in which Kootenai was able to come back. Devontae Smith Kelly is second of the game. Had three multi goal games in the league final. His first to this Master Card Memorial Cup. Fraser. Walker holds it in. His shot blocked in to the match by Anderson. Devontae Smith Pelly, we talked to him after the morning skate today and said, hey, listen, I know our line as a whole hasn't been fantastic. He said, I'm putting up points. A lot of times I'm getting the puck from the defenseman, but we really don't care. As long as we're playing a good, solid game, they feel that the chances will come, and Smith Pelly makes good on an assist from Mayer as it was Smith Pelly first off the bench for his line while Mayer was still out there. Mayer and Durazio drive the assists on Smith Pelly's third of the MasterCard Memorial Cup at 17.40. Rintoul. 
Blocked by Asus Eakins. Boomer down low for Eakin. Hootie would love one in the last minute plus. Percy in a battle with Eakin. Eakin trying to get free, had some help. So do the Mayors. Percy. Look at this. Eakin finally wins it. Feeds Hayden Rintoul. Rintoul, another block by Sezikis. He's had a number in this period. Kevin King. Anderson to handle. Slides it to Percy, who has to be exhausted on this shift as he flips it high. And it's the team with the long change, but he'll be able to make a change now. Both teams are so good on the cycle, and they can wear you down. And in that situation, Pucks dumped high into the neutral zone because Mississauga had to relieve the pressure. As it goes up in the air, McNabb accepts it, but Chug is behind him and pushes him down. You'll see Shug right there push McNabb to the ice. Checking from behind is the call with 46 seconds to go. And a sixth power play for Kootenai, who led the tournament in that category coming in at 28 plus percent. They could use one now. Reinhardt, his wrister going wide and gloved by Anderson. 2-0 deficit for Kootenai have been in this situation before, and you're right, Peter. It really got started for Kootenai in the power play. One goal in its first two games, but then in about that second period against St. John, they started to get things going, feeling more confident, started to bring the puck to the net, and just shoot everything the way of the goal. And getting back to basics can oftentimes be good medicine to feel a power play. Ramarosa fakes the shot, trying to go wide against McNabb. Wrap around, Lewin just got it. Just got there. And Tillon, break wide for Eakin. Eakin centered it in front, the flats to the board. 12 to go in the frame. McNabb launches one. Eakin backhander side of the net. Fraser. To the side again, he can wrap around, scores! Is it gonna count? You know we're going upstairs. Right as time expires, Antilla buries it. This one's gonna count. And they started to buzz at the Kootenai ice, and we just talked about it. Starting the gain momentum, second period against St. John, getting pucks to the net. Lo and behold, that's what happens here, and Antilla picks up the goal for Kootenai. Second of the tournament, second in as many nights from the pride of Madeira Park, British Columbia. Now, no question they will go upstairs for this, and there's no question in my mind that it'll count. Here's another look, and clearly that will count. Wraparound attempt by Eek, and the puck comes free, and as it does so, Antilla's there on the doorstep. A huge power play goal for the Kootenai Ice with one second to go in the second period. Yeah, and that's the other element there. So much time left that they have to drop the puck for the final faceoff of period number two. Some pushing and shoving, they'll drop it again, or will they? Time's finally gonna count down, no buzzer, but Antilla has scored, his second of the tournament from Cody Eakin on the power play with a tick left. And we've got a game, don't we? Well, there goes Kootenai, down two nothing, worst lead in hockey, starting to chip into it. To the Hockey Central panel we go. Darren Millard, Nick Kiprios, and Doug McLean. 63 seconds into the first period, Devontae smith Pally opened the scoring. One second to go in the second period, the Kootenai Ice are on the scoreboard. 
I don't know what it is about this club. When they get down or deuce, they seem to start playing. Yeah, and now what's that? For the fourth time in five yes. games, you spot uh, another team 2 nothing, and they haven't had enough uh, to generate enough offense. Uh, Kootenai now scoring their first goal on their 15th shot. Hey, but give them credit. Uh, they've been in this predicament before, and they've ri ri risen to the occasion. No, no reason to believe that uh, that won't be the case here in the third period. And, and who makes the play on the goal? Cody Eakin. I mean, how good has this guy been? And Tiller with the big goal the other night. Cody Eakin makes the big play at a crucial time late in the period to get his team back in the game. Those two have been the dynamic combination oh, for never. the Kootenai ice on that shorthanded goal where yep. Cody Eakin won the draw, got it up, and yep. it was Antilla who put the puck away. 2-1 game, a brand new third period coming your way compared to the first 19 minutes and 59 seconds of that second. Devontae smith pelly second in tournament scoring, talks about it with Rob Falls as we continue. The MasterCard Memorial Cup on Rogers Sportsnet. Brought to you by MasterCard. For everything you need to compete this season, there's MasterCard. By Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Feed your wild side. And by Neil Med Sinus Rinse. Your first line of treatment of allergy and sinus problems. And all natural. Welcome back to the Hershey Center in Mississauga, Ontario. We're through two periods of the semifinal at the 2011 MasterCard Memorial Cup. Our hardest working player of the game is brought to you by Dickies, the official workwear partner of the Western Hockey League, the Ontario Hockey League, and the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. We focus on the Washington Capitals prospect, Brett Fleming, who initiates contact early on against Jesse Isman, does the same against Kevin King, and would continue to play a good defensive game, lifting the stick of Joe Antilla. Yes, he can also rush the puck out of his own end too, being chased down by Eakin. He escapes the pressure. Red Fleming, our hardest working player of the game. Devontae Smith Pelly with a pair for Mississauga, but Sam, the Joe Antilla power play goal with one second left in the period sets the stage for what should be a terrific third. Absolutely huge to get that goal with one second left. And we had talked about it. Two nothing leads against Kootenai, not safe at all. On two separate occasions, they've come back from that very mark. They knocked off St. John to stay alive in overtime on Tuesday on a Matt Fraser goal early in the extra period. And then last night, trailed Owen Sound 2-0 before roaring back with a 7-3 win as the host team on its way back to the surface. And it's interesting, Peter, when we looked at this game, we saw two teams that had not played a complete 60 minutes of hockey. And I think very much the same way about Kootenai in the first period for sure. Started to pick it up in period number two and now building towards a strong third period finish. It's an awesome shot that we've been getting, isn't it? Get right in the action log on the sportsnet.ca to watch live streaming of our wireless camera between the benches on the ice and it can only be seen at sportsnet.ca. And what an unbelievable job Jim Young has done with that camera all tournament long. Our scoring summaries are brought to you by Cal Tire. Brands you can't find anywhere else. Cal Tire, true service. Devontae smith Pelly with his second in the first period to open the scoring. He would add his second to give Mississauga a 2-0 lead before Joe Antilla with one second left scores in the power play to cut the lead in half. Power plays have been a plenty. And we'll see the effect that the Antilla goal with one tick left has on this game. 2-1 was the score when they met Sunday night in the round run. This one means way more. A date in Sunday's championship game. Awaiting the St. John Sea Dogs. McNabb through a partial screen and Anderson made the save. Eakin downloading King. Watch Isman, his stick cut. McNabb a blast. I'm not sure Anderson saw it, but it failed to hit the target. McNabb stepped up on brakes. D'Souza into the zone. Flex for D'Souza. Chris D'Souza. To the right point, Fleming, one timer off the button. And belongs to Jesse Isman. Fleming. Rock solid in the game. The fifth round pick of the Washington Capitals. Fleming with a puck again. D'Souza as far as the line. 
Martin with McNabb right now. That's a bit of a twist. Usually it's been Martin and Leach and McNabb and Rintu. Zizekas, strong game despite it not showing up on the scoreboard. Terwaka leads a rush. Brister off Canton, bounce right out in front. Anderson kicks it away. Leach, Anderson corrals it just in the nick of time. Good save by Anderson. That puck was tipped on its way in. Had to be worried of puck coming off the back glass. And how about the Kootenai ice? Nothing to it for these guys. Down 2 nothing in the round robin. End up winning 5-4 in overtime. And then in the tiebreaker last night, after 20 minutes of play, trailed 2-0 and ended up coming back with an onslaught to win 7-3, including six unanswered in that game. Tonight, trailed Mississauga 2-0 before that goal with one second left in the second period. There's a different feel in this building after that goal as well. Reinhardt, too far for Fraser. Fraser with four points, along with Eakin in the last two games. Martin away from the shot. Intercepted by Sezikis to Justin Shaw with Smith Pelly off the outside of the net. And here's Matt Fraser. Fraser is shooting. DeMello and Reinhardt in search of a loose puck. And DeMello on the right side of it. Descended ahead to Sezikis. Casey Sezikis twists. Backhands it behind the net. Paulson will get to it. Luke Paulson. Van Tiller. And icing will be the call. Well, the Mississauga St. Michael's Majors, when leading after two periods, it combined the regular season, the playoffs, and here in this tournament, 50 and 0. Looks like a Mariano Rivera saves record. And so Dave Cameron's team charged with that task in this game, but that goal at the end of the second put a lot of people on notice and a lot of nervous people here at the first percent. There are. You can feel it. Boomer's got jump here in the third, too. Benoit, Boomer heading to the net, broken up by Garazio, who has an assist in the game. He came over in a deadline area deal from the London Knights. with Parente to Kramarosa, who nearly made it 3 nothing shorthanded late in that period. Yeah, and it was the play that came back the other way that resulted in that goal. Kramarosa forced an offside by pressuring King. But also had the puck, and that's one thing about Kramarosa and trying to find consistency in his game. There are times when he doesn't manage the puck well. We saw another example of that there. And then you watch this guy in the kill and you say, oh man. He's a world beater. He turns scout's eyes. He's got long reach, good size, good skating ability. So it's a matter for a young player just trying to find consistency in his game. There's a lot of tools there to work with. He sure is. You like to have that toolbox. Flick with Grace who shoots it in. Hayden Rinfield. Back with McNabb, by the way, in this pairing. As Isman back hands it. King charging in against Fleming. Fleming. Good play. D'Souza. Into the zone. Away from Rintoul and then some help from Braden McNabb. You gotta love it when the weak guy can help you up and when you go into one three you have that luxury. D'Souza now. At the end of the shift slides it in and goes to the bench on the team. 16-12 to go in regulation in this semifinal. A one goal Mississauga lead. Reinhardt, did he take a stick in the face yes, or did. just knocked it down with a high stick? No, he took it in the chops. It was an attempt at a stick lift by Wise. And although Wise has brought good energy in this game, he's been in the box a couple of times as well. And you'll see Reinhardt just as he comes in over the zone right here. Look for the stick lift. Nope. Ends up hitting him right in the chops. And Wise knew it. Threw his head back right away. Kootenai scored on its last power play chance late in the second period. This is their seventh opportunity. And an opportunity to draw even. Eakin, Fraser, and Tilla who has the goal for Kootenai. Reinhardt and McNabb to start. Sezikis, Fleming, Shug. And Canton. A Kootenai faceoff win. Fraser a little trouble, but now handles it. 
Braden McNabb, Frazier, that big one-timer. Anderson the save, and the pass too hot for Frazier from Cody. You can see Fleming having to go down to that block position, just cringing, knowing how hard Frazier shoots it. Frazier, hard pass, and Kellen Egan. They enter the attacking zone. Frazier, upended by Kent. McNabb, pressured. Zizekas in a battle on the board. Fleming wants to send it out. Eakin wants space. And McNabb, even with that stick, can't get there. Short-handed Zizekas into the zone. Stopped by Lewin. Looked like the paddle. Got a stick on it. Back comes in till it just onside. And that was close. And we know what kind of trouble that blue line has caused in this event. A whole ton of it. Ring tool through the seam, it's Fraser. Back to Martin, traffic in front, it's blocked. And I think it was Sezikis again. It's about five for him. Martin fanned out, broke his stick. Chuck trying to take advantage now. Twenty-eight to go on the power play. Jesse Isman around, Joseph Kemmerow. Isman to the Canton with Boomer, supports the puck. Back to the blue line and McNabb. To Rintu. Kevin King. The wrister off Cameroso's shin pass. Those battles in front of the net are just unbelievable right now. Isman, Boomer, Canton, oh man. Rintu a penalty over tip by King and nearly drew to the and now King's going to take a penalty. Walker just shoots. And Rintoul better be careful, too, with some extra shots. Coincidentals at the end to go along with a King penalty. 2-1 Mississauga. Insurance goal of the game is brought to you by your local insurance broker to score your best goal, your best insurances, and insurance broker. Well, he's got goals for the Mississauga, St. Michael's Majors, Devontae smith Kelly off of the mare leave in the corner. It's smith Kelly who curls in off the boards, avoids the check from Hurley, and goes upstairs. And a beautiful play and a good shot there by Devontae smith Kelly, the marksman for Mississauga. The Souza takes an elbow from King, bleeding from the nose, cross-checking to Rintoul and roughing the call to Cramarosa. All at 6-10 of this third period and a power play this time for Mississauga, their fifth. They're one for four. That man on your screen opened the scoring of the power play at 103 of the game. Shot down low, hits it, or make that Smith Kelly mishandle. Devontae Smith Pelly into the high slot. Sizikis blocked by Martin. Rebound. Percy on the short off. Couldn't send it on target. There's another one of those battles you've been talking about. This one on the boards, though. One touch. Percy to Chug. Down low. Jamming away. Smith Pelly looking for the hat trick. Stewart Percy. Goes off, Cody Eakin. Smith Kelly again. Shug, his shot off the outside of the net. No way Lewin saw that. No chance. Canton, he saw that one. And big time. You know, Kootenay's done a really good job with Justin Chug. They play him on the strong side here and want him working off the half ball. He's got such good hands, but Kootenay realizes this, and they have played him tough there all game long. You'll see Chug slide up now. Now he's got a lane. Okay, that shot wasn't seen, or at least tipped partially off Martin, but he has not been able to control the half wall as easily as he had been able to do throughout the course of the playoffs in the regular season. Fleming. Blocked by Braden McNabb this time. Backhanded by Joey Leach, a two-on-one short-handed. Reinhardt and Fraser, Reinhardt, and Anderson the save. 
and get into that 1-3-1 one, one situation as Mississauga has played on occasion on its power play and you leave yourself susceptible. Durazio's the lone guy back as it's chipped up the wall. Everyone's caught up ice, so now it's a two-on-one. Reinhardt elects to keep it, and Anderson stayed right with the shooter. Durazio plays it right down the middle, and Anderson comes up with his 21st save of the evening. Reinhardt scored his lone goal in the tournament last night, shorthanded in the tiebreaker win over Owen Sam. He's in the two shorthanded goals in that game, and power play as well. And so special teams a big part of the story in that win in the tiebreak. Shot to the line. Canton trouble. Did it stay in? They said yes. And that was close. Walked the line. Little Johnny Cash. That poor line. <laughs> Game's not making it easy on the visit. Deflected. Lewin will touch it. Leave it. Poked in front. Shot fast. Handed by Boomer off Durazio and out as Kuki will kill off the penalty to Ken. One of their overage players. Shot an easy wrister to handle for Nathan Lewis. And there's King back out on the ice with all the penalties having been expired. Again, this thing's going to come down just to a battle of will. Both coaches today, the Kootenai Ice did not skate as a result of their 7 3 win over Owen Sound last night. Chris Knobloch gave everyone a rest. The Majors skated and participated this morning in their regular paces. And the number four has really worked well for the ice. Seated fourth in the Eastern Conference when the playoffs started. They defeated Saskatoon in four, Medicine Hat in four. And after dropping the first game to Portland, came back to win four straight against the Winterhawks to seal up the Ed Chinout Cup. And four straight wins is what is required for Kootenai to win the MasterCard Memorial Cup. But well, you need three before you can get four. Flick wants to prevent that. Flick played in front to Souza off a stick into the corner. Flick scored the game winner Sunday in the third versus Kootenai in a 2-1 triumph. Eakin with authority to Isman. King trying to bust up the middle. Fleming cut him off. Rintoul, who's going to make the next play in this game? Sometimes, Peter, it comes down to who makes the next mistake. Oftentimes, that's what it'll come down to. Rintoul, his shot on target, good save by Anderson. D'Souza rolls off his stick. Rintoul to Cody Eakin. Long shift now for Eakin. His sixth point of the tournament on that power play goal with one second to go by Ant Killer. This will be icing. Everyone asks, is Cody Eakin ready to take his game to the next level to play at the, at the National Hockey League? And you have to say yes, and here's why. His ability to play in all three zones. So as the puck goes out in front of that, look who's back there, Eakin. Now he limits the stick ability of D'Souza, really taking a golden opportunity away. When you have the skills to play in all three zones, it makes you adaptable. And what you can do is take that game to the next level and play a, anywhere from a first to a fourth line role. Cody Eakin has that ability. Max Reinhardt shaking up. It's Kramarosa, but he's back into the play. Reinhardt shoots it in. Fraser and Percy with Reinhardt. Percy, a little touch pass to Jordan Meir. Every one of those little plays becomes awfully important. Yeah, and he makes them all the time. I mean, but defensive defensemen, like him, like James Martin for Kootenai, these guys make subtle plays all game long. He still has four assists in the tournament, Stuart Person, including one on the opening power play goal tonight. Kootenai trying to stretch Mississauga out a little bit here in the third. Mello and Boomer in another tussle. Call the board work here. He saved you. Another slugfest, as we expected. Time and space, not easy to come by. Back to the line is Joey Leach. Leach wants a shooting lane on Percy. There's Smith Kelly involved with Joey Leach away from the puck. Here's Shug, busting away by himself. Shug and Martin. 
could stick. Four on four, but it's 2-1. Nervous moments for Jeff Chenoweth with his team trailing 2-1. Such a proud moment when he got to hoist his father's President's Cup, the Ed Chenoweth Cup trophy, and he has no question about whether his team has the character to get the job done. We have a special group of players. I knew that coming into the start of the year. We returned, to, I think, 17 or 18 players. So, and they were a special group, and we knew that would make the transition easier with Chris Knobloch coming in as a first-year head coach because Chris had been an assistant for three years. Uh, they're, they're a special group. They're a close-knit group. There's no I in the word team. You know, all the cliches you can use. Um, you know, it doesn't happen every year, and, uh, you know, that's another thing. When you realize you've got a good group, you want to make the most of it because it's such a tough event to get to. 2-1 under... 10 to go and almost 9 to go now. Regulation kicks it. Max kicks it. Parente, one timer blocked by Elgin Pierce. McNabb off the skate of Pierce, held in by Parente, and now McNabb an opportunity to send it for Antillinen. Good read by Parente, who backhands it in. Smart play, short shift. Aiden Rintoul pressured by D'Souza, hangs onto it. Finds its way to Elgin Pierce. Pierce to King. Hooked off the puck. And Percy, the outlet to Brace. It's turning into a three on two, but Eakin will help that problem. Rich shot the block. Another chance. Lewin reached in behind him. And it stayed out. Wow. Not sure. Not for sure. He reached in the net and pulled it out. Pierce at the end of the shift shoots it in. And some trouble almost came out in front. Sues a rink wide and a beauty to Wise. Jamie Wise against Jagger Dirk. Lewin the save. He's made some big ones since it's been 2 to nothing and then 2 1. And this is icing. Now at the top of the broadcast, we focused on the goal is for Nathan Lewin has become more receptive to Justin Cardinal's teaching and becoming more athletic, doing what you have to do to make the save. And here, this puck is just lying in the crease, and he is down star fishing and is able to come up with the puck. I thought right here he reached back, but the puck was nowhere close to going in. Flick bearing down on him before it came loose. And rifles it off of Martin. A race, Shug and Martin again. Some help from Joey Leach. Devontae Smith Kelly with two, has three in the tournament. Joanne Tillis in pursuit of it as the lone Hoop Eagle, his second. Another 2 1 game. And a long shot that kind of surprised Anderson off the stick of Joey Leach. Bit of a knuckleball. Joey Leach in the Kootenai ice, and Jeff Chanel talked about it. 17 18 guys coming back. This is a team last year that had a 2-0 lead against Medicine Hat in the first round of the playoffs. And then the Hat won four straight, knocked Kootenai out. And so Chris Knobloch's sole focus this year was to say, hey guys, let's get into the playoffs and really focus on the playoffs. This is a franchise that for 13 straight years has been in the postseason, but it was about advancing past the first round. What a job by this young man to get it done. McNabb. Club down from the front of the net by Fleming. How close? 2-1 and 25-24 of the shots in favor of the host team. Not a whole lot different than what we saw in round robin play as Flick and King get involved at the end of the play. King wanting a penalty on Flick. But this game has had every bit of nastiness right from the opening puck drop. Rob Flick, two goals in the tournament. Shot out in this game. Chris, Chris Knobloch is some kind of hot up at the end of the bench. They wanted a cross check on Flick. Almost an opportunity off the face off for Jesse Isman. Cleared out of harm's way in the nick of time. Percy. Brace to Sousa. Now it's Mayer off the bench to join them, and Eakin 
trying to gather speed. Nice take in the skates by Isman. Jesse Isman blocked by Fleming again. He's in the road everywhere. Well, he works in construction in the offseason. <laughs> Get him a vest painted yellow. Eakin, some diligent work and a good low shot. The tested Anderson from Cody Eakin. And surprised him. Got there in a hurry. McNabb stopped by Mir. And he'll finally come out to Gibson. Just over six to go in regulation. 2-1 in this semi-final affair. Gramarosa tied up by Rinsu. Mir to the line. Garaggio content to shoot it low. That's the play by Mir. Yes, it was. Gibson without a glove. Boomer past Terwaka, and Terwaka now will clear the zone. Parente, good lead pass to Kitson, cutting to the middle, wrist shot off Lewis. Stop Max Kitson. Rinko on outlet, fights Mark. The St. John Sea Dogs, the Quebec Major Junior League champions, await the winner in the title game on Sunday. And we'll have all the action for you right here on Rocket Sportsnet. Fraser with a little room to operate. Matt Fraser, he shot. Stopped by Anderson. Back to the line. Leach, Martin, not by John, and block two. Down the stretch they come. Leach. Smith Pelly leans on him. Smith Pelly with both goals for the host side. Fraser taps it towards Max Reinhardt to Sissikis in the road, and then Martin steps in to the Majors captain. With some good support from Leach, but again, that neutral ice battle is unreal. So tough to get ice between the blue ones. Lengthy amount of time without a whistle here. And Tillich. Fraser, he'll shoot it in and finally head to the bench. Dutch. Egan can't quite get there to hold it in. Neutral zone with some support. Isman into the zone, trying to get to the net. Upended by Percy. McNabb off the dasher board. To Cody Egan on the cycle. Isman King just out of his reach. Jagger Dirk. McNabb. Excellent stop by GP Anderson off the captain, Braden McNabb. And again, controls it with the blocker into the corner. Anderson, the reason it remains 2-1 Mississauga. And the coach, not happy. The play of this game brought to you by Bauer Hockey. We turn to Devontae smith Pelly once again. And working on the power play early in the game, it's smith Pelly is able to take this in the high slot and get it past Nathan Lewin. That opens the scoring in this game. And then Smith Kelly would wrap in off the boards, go top shelf on Lewin this time around, and two goal game for the Majors' leading goal scorer. His late second period goal at 17 40 of it. Holding up. Still plenty of time left for the Western League champions to draw even. Remember that stat. Mississauga 50 and 0 when leading throughout the entire season playoffs. Memorial Cup when leading heading to the third. Reinhardt wants to change that. Shot it wide. Rintoul a block by shot. Rintoul recovers. They've shot and hammers it in. Dave Cameron makes changes. Rintoul after it. Flicking his own territory to person. Eakin strips to Souza. Cody Eakin a pivot. Isman into the corner. He can await it. Isman still controls it. Knocked away. Rintoul able to keep it in for a second. Percy Fan still in the zone. No. Came out just enough. Boy, those battles again so close to the line. As Cody Eakin 
kept the play alive by pickpocketing Chris D'Souza. And I tell you, when you're in this game between these two teams, you better have a quick stick and you better move the puck in a hurry or guys like Eakin will take it off you in no time at all. And now D'Souza heads off. Joey Leach off the stick of five hops. And held by Anderson as we're down to 2.40 to go in regulation time. Chris Knobloch looking on and really feeling that he had a special team here after game two of the Saskatoon series when Saskatoon tied it late and Kootenay ended up winning in overtime and felt that after that game his team could really do something special and lo and behold that's what they did winning the edge Chinook Cup. They're not out here. Long way to go. Hustling after it is Mir against Martin. Mir up against Martin. Kent, and Kent just sends it off the end boards. Steel Boomer. Martin and Elgin Pierce from Port Coquitlam, BC. Boomer. Can't move it any farther than the line, and Chuck will shoot it in. Braden McNabb, Sezekis. Into the corner, ragging some valuable time off the clock. Sezekis, great work. And Jagger Dirk finally gets away from him. Puck remains in the zone, though, courtesy of Sezekis. And the fans here at the Hershey Center have seen that effort all season long. Why, where's that clever? Shot, great shift for Dave Cameron's crew. That's what you have to do. When you're not scoring, you have to be able to contribute in other ways. Makes its way off the high stick to Antilla. We'll look at Lewis for an extra attacker. He's almost at the bench. Now he is. Kootenay net empty. Here comes Eakin. Thought he was going to get free. Antilla to Fraser. Net empty. Cleared by Flick. Riley Prince has an empty net. Can he ice it? Diving play by McNabb to save his team season. After an unbelievable play by McNabb to take the goal away, Rintoul has the opportunity with numbers, but he forgets about D'Souza who had wiped out. Here's the diving play by McNabb. Now D'Souza goes in to chase this puck and ends up behind the play. Now he pickpockets Rintoul, spins around in the backhand and dumps it into the net and D'Souza gets rewarded for his fine effort in this game. The Mississauga native has his first at this MasterCard Memorial Cup into an empty net that has the host team seconds away from playing for the title on Sunday night. Steel Boomer. Lewin will go to the bench, I'm sure, again. There he goes. Net empty again. Fleming to make that mirror the same play to shoot it out. Eakin. The ice, an unbelievable run for the Western Hockey League title from the number four G. Lose their first two here, win two elimination games to get to the semifinal. But it's not going to be enough. The host team will play for the MasterCard Memorial Cup on Sunday night. And chinks all around for the Mississauga St. Michael's Majors, and it was all that close once again between these two teams. It's like splitting hairs. The difference between these two teams. Two great goalies, great defensive force, three lines worth of depth, and fourth lines that have no issue playing. And the Mississauga St. Michael's Majors vindicate a loss in the Ontario Hockey League Championship to Owen Sound by earning their way to the MasterCard Memorial Cup Final on Sunday. And all you have to do is look at the Kootenay bench to understand what these kids put into it. And the tears entering the eyes of 
Frazier, 265 games played, 174 points, recently signed by the Dallas Stars. Steel Boomer, a Kootenai Ice player, through and through, 224 games played, had another 32 in the postseason for his career. And how about Kevin King? 46 postseason games to lead the parade of graduating players. 227 points for King in his Western Hockey League career. The emotional leader, Steel Boomer, everyone around this Kootenai team will tell you that. Mississauga and St. John played opening night. They'll provide the closing act as well. Gentlemen. Peter Sam, another great job. A building that's been criticized all year for being too quiet was perhaps at its loudest when that empty net puck went in. Nick Kiprios and Doug McLean with Darren Millard, third level of the Hershey Center, watching a Kootenai Ice squad that is eliminated on just their fourth loss in the last 21 games. Yeah, and uh, St. Mike's knew that they had a, a hockey club in Kootenai that was resilient, but, you know, it's a war of attrition, and when you got to play 24 hours later after coming off of an, an emotional win, uh, it's difficult, and I thought uh, Mississauga did a tremendous job staying on the body throughout the hockey game and just literally wearing down Kootenai. When you lose your first two games in a, in a tournament as tough as this one, it is an, a, a monumental challenge to come back. This is a team that's had a rough ride in the playoffs. They deserve a ton of credit for winning the Ed Chenault Trophy, which was a highlight for Jeff Chenault, the general manager and president. We saw some great players in Cody Eakin, Reinhardt, King, Frazier, McNabb. It was fun to watch this group, and they are a resilient group. They battled back hard. A nice touch saluting the fans in Mississauga. Ivanka Osmak, Ken Reed are coming up next as one game remains in the Canadian Hockey League season. Kootenai arrived to Mississauga, the hottest team in the field, winning 15 of 16. WHL champions, however, struggled early, but only set up a club that could handle adversity. After two victories to advance to the semifinal, the door closed in a major way tonight. A third straight comeback fell just short, leaving the West headed home and the host on their way to a date that they've circled all year long. St. Mike's, St. John for the title on Sunday. Connected is next. <laughs>